guys, and, and for a lot of reasons, and the staff, because um, we got better between South Carolina and tonight because of the way we prepared and practiced. And, and the, the, what I told them, you don't get an edge in the game, right? That momentum's up for grabs in the game and things of that nature, but you don't gain an edge in the game. You gain an edge from preparation and practice. And we came back in and we were in here Sunday night after I got back from Milwaukee, from the Marquette uh, experience uh, with the Hall of Fame. And we practiced for about an hour and a half. We came back yesterday, it was phenomenal. We had a solid walkthrough. Nobody's hanging their heads, there's tremendous energy. Um, I, they're, they're buying into the fact that we believe we're going to win. And, and tonight we didn't see those ghosts that we sometimes see, you know, when things start to go bad for us. And uh, I'm really, really proud of the way that they played. And, and, uh, but, it, but again, the preparation leading into it, the spirit, the togetherness, um, those are the things that carried us through and that carried us through the game. So got a lot of good basketball from a lot of people, but our fans, they, they, were, they were outstanding. And uh, our student section that was there, they were fantastic. And the energy in the building when we needed them the most was at the highest level. So I'm very, very thankful for that. So we'll go from there. Okay, we're going to go into questions, starting with Chip Towers and then going to Mark Weiser. Yeah, Coach, uh, I just wonder, is it uh, the relief? What's, what's the uh, primary emotion that you feel? Uh, since this, um, I think it's every, I think there's a lot, you know, I, I think there's a lot. I, I shared the moment with my daughters, which is important. So I, I would guess there's, there's a, some relief, but there's also, like I told the guys before the game, as corny as it sounds, I mean, you got to play with joy. I mean, you really do. I mean, we're playing college basketball in the SEC at a great school, right? Like, and against a top team. I mean, play with some real joy and enthusiasm. So I think there's that. The guys were happy. They were happy, but they weren't, they weren't overly uh, giddy, but they were excited. They earned it and they know it. And, and that's what we've said. We just got to get this thing started, right? We just got to get it started. And, and, and that happened for us tonight. So there's some relief. There, there's, for me, it's happiness for them and for the staff and, and really for our families. Um, but here in about 30 minutes, I'll be on to Vanderbilt. Tom, um, I, I saw you, you got on the phone quickly in the, in the uh, stands over there. Uh, I'm not sure who you're talking to, but um, I was gonna ask you who that was. That, was that Joni or something? I don't know. Yeah, that was my wife. That was my okay. wife. Okay. Wanted um, to share with her real quick. Sure. Um, some of the uh, the players were talking about, and you kind of just alluded to it, that uh, I think Aaron Cook said the uh, job's not done. And um, someone else said that you, you mentioned about, hey, you know, let's continue winning. I mean, how much uh, now that you think, uh, you, you know, that you, you guys played a complete game, that, that uh, they have that confidence? Well, that's what we needed, right? And we'll see from there. But we, 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 that's exactly what you need, that they could finish it. And we did finish it. And there were a couple moments, you know, the jump ball calls and things like that. Uh, that we had to we had to work through, but nobody got their head down. All right, nobody got their head down. We knew we we're playing against a really good team, a really well coached team. And uh, but as I said to them today, and it, it, let, let's remember, there's two thirds of the conference season left, and it's real easy to forget that, you know. And I don't know what they hear or listen to on the outside. I know I don't listen to much at all, but I know that I have to be cognitive of of what they listen to. But at the end of the day, the only people that can fix what we're going through and overcome it are the ones that are inside the gym with us. And I thought everybody did that, and, and uh, I really did. I thought Ty McMillan came off his best practice yesterday in probably three weeks, and I thought he came in and played really, really solid for us. That, that's the kind of momentum you've got to have. Jabri Abdul-Rahim made all his free throws but one. I mean, there's so many things that go into the game. Dalen played the most minutes that he's played. Aaron played a very complete game. Uh, Cario, uh was back. I mean, when he got the Vanderbilt game, he was averaging almost 24 points a game, I believe, 23-6, right? He gets hurt on the dunk. All right, he's never the same in that game, doesn't play against Auburn, and he's really not the same against South Carolina. It's hard to take good players out of your lineup. It's really hard to take the leading scorer out of your lineup. And he just, even when he was back the other day, he really wasn't as good. Well, tonight he had more of that energy, that, that pop, and, and, and he played well. You know, so we just have to keep understanding that you just persevere through the tough times, right? You just persevere through it, and, and you don't lose your enthusiasm or your joy for it. And I'm never going to let that happen to me. So, like I said to those guys today, if if, uh, if you're struggling, believe we can win, go sit up, go sit up in the seats. Maybe your parents have an extra seat. I said, because it ain't going to be on the bench. We need to believe we're going to win the games throughout the game, even when it's a game of runs. Jack Farley said something to me today that made a lot of sense. He's been fantastic. And he sent me some great texts. He said, of all the sports 
basketball is the one where things are going to go bad in the game. Right. They're, they're, they're not going to go your way inside of that game. And you've got to be able to overcome it. And he's very great perspective. It really is. Things are going to go wrong. It's a game of runs. And our guys never dropped their head when they were on a run and we got our run back. OK, next, we're going to go to Drew Beal and then Charles Odom. Hey, coach. Uh, congrats on the win. Thank you. Uh, your guys, your guys did an awesome job at the foul line tonight and had their, their second 20 plus free throw half in the last two games, which is pretty incredible. And, you know, that ultimately let you come back despite only making two field goals in the last six minutes. How much has, you know, living at the line sort of begun to factor into this team's offensive identity and recipe for success? Well, it has to. And it was hard for us to get to the basket early on with the drop coverages that they were in. But we opened it up as we went along and we scored points off turnovers today where we, where, where we haven't been gaining many points off turnovers and we've been giving up too many. But we're a very good free throw shooting team, knock on wood, right? And we've got to make sure that, that we continue to do that and that we continue to get to the foul line. We get in the bonus early. You know, obviously some of the fouls were, um, I thought a big turning point was the foul on Jabri for three shots. And, and I think that cut us to one or two. Uh, and that was huge, huge, absolutely huge. And uh, we got to go to that line with confidence. And, and we did, Braylon made his leg. You know, he's way better than shooting in the fifties in the last week. He's way better than that. Goes three for three tonight. So we spent a lot of time on free throws. We spent a lot of time on the technique. Um, and, and, and it paid off tonight. You referred to earlier, um, your team not paying attention to the ghost at the end of the game. Um, but you did have some, some, uh, some crisis moments, I guess, with the floor come from and, and that team. I lost you a little bit. Say, say that last part again, but the correct, you're breaking up a little bit. Yeah. You, you know, where did the leadership on the floor come from to get you past that? that 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 uh, crisis stage with the jump balls and the oh and yeah the I think Aaron, I, I think I think it was active. but Aaron Aaron has a real gift of urgency and he had the urgency yesterday and he had it today and I think it carried out and when he's urgent he's highly confident and 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 it brings an urgency to our team and I think when you're urgent you're not gonna feel like you're gonna lose right even when we were making some mistakes we just had to capitalize and we just had to capitalize we missed a couple open people in the press so we hadn't been in that situation in a long time um and, and we handled it and, and um, we did a good job with it. Even though, even though the jump balls were costly in one case, the, 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 the play where, where they took the ball from Braylon, that was a tough one. That was the only moment that I got a little sick to my stomach and I go, oh no, right? But I got over that in about two seconds because we just got to move right forward. And um, they did. So you know, I'm really proud of the way that they persevered. Okay, next we're gonna go to Lance McCurley and then Mark Bradley. Okay. Coach, just kind of talk about the points off the bench tonight. And then uh, I think inside, y'all had 32 points inside the paint. Was that kind of the game plan to try to kind of jam it inside and get it away from those guards uh, on the offensive? Well, we want to drive the ball. We want to post up. You know, we want to do both, right? So it, it's um, – it, they weren't giving us the lane very much early on. And so we had, we had to find different ways to get in there. And they do a really good job uh, with, with, when you have two guys on the side to, to deal with the role, they get that guy all the way into under the rim, right? They do a really good job of that. Last year they had Herb Jones in there and now they've got other guys. So you've got to find a way to move that guy. We weren't moving him very well early. And I think we we're able to move him a little bit more, but we kept the ball moving, which is the most important thing. It's not about the set that's called. It's about the ball movement and the body movement. So we continue to, to have that. And, I've said this a couple of times when it comes to Alabama, they're like the Golden State Warriors. Everybody thinks it's the three-point shooting of Steph Curry and Klay Thompson that separates them. No, it's the layups that they get. And that's the same thing with Alabama. They, they, they have a tremendous rep for shooting threes, and they do. Shackelford did a good job there. And I think one of the, the uh, revisions in the second half was to go into, starting with Jackson, go into more of a no-catch face guard type of situation. And Brian Fish made that recommendation to us in the coach's room and it was a really good move because it because it, it stifled them just a little bit because he was too open in the first half with the five threes but I thought we did a pretty good job and I've got to go watch the film to be clear on this but I thought we did a pretty good job of when they started to break down and go to the basket that we're in the gaps and we got beat on blow bys a couple of times but when they were trying to isolate and get to the rim we did a pretty good job of playing sound defense so if you're going to beat Alabama you've got to win the game uh you've got to win the points in the paint game and the fact that we were able to win the turnover points was an added bonus because we haven't done that very much this year. Last year, we did a lot more of that. This year, not so much. And that was good to get it tonight that way. 
Uh, uh, Tom, you've uh, you said a minute ago that you just needed to get it going. Mm -hmm. um, given the way of the world and the way of college basketball too, the last few years with COVID and the portal and guys going pro and, uh, and you having a whole new team year after year, is it just been difficult to get traction at Georgia in in a way that nobody could have ever foreseen? Yeah, I, I would I would say that traction because without traction you don't get sustainability, and and traction's hard. It, it's really really hard, and there's been moments of it. And I mean, you think about it. Um, we got the number one player in the draft, one of the the best freshmen in the country, and we were never able to go out and recruit to that, right? Like, yes, you're recruiting off Zoom, but you're not going out in the public and and being able to do that. And and um, man, in my other places where where we had really good players, people not only could see them play, but then you could go out and you could you could say, hey, you can do this, you can do that, you can be like this, you can be like that. It gets a little harder in the Zoom area, but. You just work through it, right? You just work through it. And, and what we have here are some really, really strong character kids. I've said this before, and I think it, 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 we, it, it bears repeating in the sense we just had the highest GPA that we've had in, in my three plus years here this past semester. These kids are serious minded about school. They're serious minded about their work. They're serious minded about their extra work. So it is hard to build cohesiveness. It is hard to get that chemistry that you want to have. And without that, it's hard to get the traction. But you never find out if you don't get that win that you've got to have to see if you can build on from it. And obviously we had that Memphis win. And then the very next game, we lose what was arguably our best player in Jalen Ingram, certainly our most uh, well-rounded player when it came to maturity, experience, toughness, size, ability to play multiple positions and ability to guard multiple positions. So you just have to keep working through it. And, and that's why I don't get down, right? We just keep moving forward and, if I'm down or they're down, we don't win tonight because we did not finish the game well at South Carolina. But we came back on Sunday. We came back on Monday with a great result. And so they get the result tonight that we needed. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, next, um, we're going to go to Jack Leo and um, finish up with Thomas uh Coach, yesterday you talked about how a, a win tonight will get your team's confidence like started. What's the next step in continuing to grow that confidence now looking forward to Vanderbilt? Well, I think that's that's it. I mean, come back, practice well, get ready to play Vanderbilt, hopefully have a healthy carry over window. We did not have that uh, the last time that we played them. And uh, we we're still right there to win the game. So um, this will do wonders for them. That doesn't mean we're going to win. All right, but what it'll do is it'll do wonders for them as we move forward. And because now they have this under their belt. And so it's just, you know, you, you enjoy it, you process it, you learn from it, and you get ready for the next one. And that's all we'll do. Hey, Coach, congratulations on the win. Uh, you talked about it a little bit earlier, but uh, can you talk a little bit more about the defensive adjustments that were made at halftime to drop their uh, shooting percentage by almost 18% and their 3% by a lot? Yeah, of I, I think the fact that we want to make it harder for Shackelford to catch the ball, I, I think that was big. Uh, we wanted to make it much tougher for him to be open and, and put more emphasis on that because we certainly want to go guard. When he's driving the ball, we want to bring traffic to him. But when he's standing there ready to shoot, it's really hard to help off because he's got such a quick release. I told him after the game, he's going to play 10, 12 years in the NBA. I mean, he's a really, really, really good player, really good player. And, and, and he can make shots like that. I mean, he beat us in here three years ago. So, I mean, a, a guy like that, um, he makes a difference. And so we had to, we had to, we had to change it up a little bit. And uh, um, I thought our coverages were pretty solid. I thought there were gaps. We, we, we took away the gaps defensively. We didn't get hugged up on our man. I'm sure I'm going to see some of that when I watch the film, but for the most part, we didn't get hugged up. And uh, that was big. And then we were able to keep the ball moving offensively, use the entire width of the court uh, in the half court. You got it ahead a couple of times. But we're able to get the ball reversed, get some driving kicks, get some reversals, get to the rim, get some fouls. Okay, that's all. Thanks, all right. Coach. Thank you. Thank you very much.